In this video, we're going to talk about a pre-submittal checklist of items that you want to make sure that you take care of and coordinate with the fabricator at the uh, very beginning of detailing on a project, as well as some key things that you want to make sure that you're taking care of before you process any submittals. The very first thing at the beginning of a project is that you want to verify the version of Tecla structures that you're going to be working in with the fabricator especially if they require you to submit the Tecla Structures model. It's really important to make sure that you're not working in a newer version of Tecla Structures than they are because they can't open up that model that you send them if it's newer than their version. And again, that's especially important if they're trying to extract CNC files using the Tecla Structures model or they have project management tools and things like that. Another key thing is to make sure that you have incorporated their setup. If a fabricator has a Tecla firm folder, or if they have a model template that has a bunch of customized settings, especially related to CNC exports and things like that, or drawing title blocks and templates, you want to make sure that you've absorbed those settings into your model folder or created your uh, steel detailing model from their model template to make sure all those files are contained in there. A good example of that is if I open up the model folder here, let's say that I sort by file type and I go down here and I'm going to look for these TPL files. So TPL are Tecla template files for drawing title blocks, bill of materials, and things like that that appear on drawings. So again, if the fabricator has those customized, then you want to make sure that you have those incorporated into your model. Now this uh, takes me to the next point, is that when you submit the Tecla Structures model to the fabricator, I would recommend that you have all of the files that are required for the drawing title blocks, any custom objects IMP files, um, any and all of the uh, profile catalog, material catalog, all of the files related to detailing and viewing that model properly um, and as well as including like the drawings folder. So if you have your drawings created at a particular submittal that you have everything required here all zipped up uh, including the entire model folder and don't just send like the DB1 file or the, you know, just a few of the files. The reason is, is again, just so that way you don't have to have any trouble with the fabricator opening the model, viewing your profiles, and they're not missing any of like your profile catalog and things like that. They pretty much have a fully encompassed uh, copy of the model. Now, again, if you're working with a firm folder and you've customized and tweaked it beyond uh, something that they have, you're going to have to kind of like try to communicate that to the fabricator and show them how things work and to set up that firm folder on their side. I don't recommend doing that. I recommend just having all of the files and required settings and things zipped up inside of that complete model folder to make sure the fabricator doesn't have any issues when they unzip and open up the model. Now, one thing as the fabricator that's really important to understand here is that the uh, DB1 file that is found inside of the model folder. So let me actually just uh, go by name here. This is what actually contains the Tecla Structures model itself. And what's really important for Tecla to recognize when you try to open up a model from Tecla Structures is that the DB1 file inside of the Tecla Structures model folder has to be exactly the same name as the folder. So you'll see here that the parent folder um, is 23099 Tecla submittal examples and the DB1 is exactly the same except there's that DB1 file extension at the end. I see a lot of times where detailers will take all the files and then they'll zip this up and then they'll, they'll rename it and name it something differently than the zip file. And then when uh, fabricators unzip this and they just use the zip file folder name, it's different than the DB1 and they can't find the model and it becomes kind of a whole bunch of a commotion. So just remember that the DB1 and this folder, they have to be exactly the same name. Now, what I usually do is I will select like all the files here inside of the folder whenever I'm zipping it up. And I'll actually just uh, deselect and select the DB1 here. And that way that I can ensure that the DB1 is going to be used as the name of the zip file. Now, if I come in here and I just go to send to and say compressed zip folder, what that'll do is that'll zip everything up and look at what it does is it uses that DB1 file uh, name and it makes the zip file name exactly that. Now, when I double click on the zip file, you'll see that there is no subfolder in here. So there's not like another sub tier folder um, of the model folder inside of that. So it's just got everything in here. So if I was the fabricator and I received this, and if I double clicked on the zip and I saw that, then basically what all I need to do is right click and just say um, extract all, and then it's just gonna use that default name and then the, the folder name here of the extraction folder is gonna be exactly the name of the DB1 file, if that's how you see it coming from the detailer. So that's the cleanest and most consistent way to do it. 
Another way that you might sometimes see from the detailer is they might grab the parent folder here and then they'll right click and then they will go in here and they'll say, let's go ahead and send this to a zip folder. So I'll do that just as an example. Now when I do that, you will see that the folder name is good, but inside of that there's a subfolder because the model folder itself got zipped up into the master zip file. So when you extract this, you kind of have to cut this folder out and put it at the top level so that way the fabricator can quickly see and find that model when they try to open it in Tecla Structures. So these are just a couple things that usually trip up uh, fabricators when they're opening up the model. So again, that's why I like to just go directly in here as the detailer, I select everything, I deselect and reselect the DB1, and then I just come in here and I just go to send it to zip, uh, compress the zip file, and then boom, right there, it's named exactly right, and it's all at the top level. So it just depends on whatever the fabricator is specifically, specifically looking for. Whatever you end up doing, just try to be consistent as the detailer so that way the fabricator knows exactly what to expect whenever you're sending them the packages. And again, just a, a, a you know, quick reminder on the model folder, make sure that you include anything and everything that the fabricator needs as much as possible to open up and look at drawings, view all of the profiles and everything and all of the pieces in the model, and just make it easy as possible for them so that way they're not having to deal with any technical issues related to a firm folder, et cetera. Now, a couple other things that you wanna make sure that you have taken care of is that you've coordinated with the fabricator, especially uh, if they use Tecla PowerFab or Tecla EPM. You wanna make sure that you have all of the material grades that they're expecting over on uh, their side to import for, especially for like HSS shapes and things like that, to make sure that they don't have any translation issues when they import your bill of materials from Tecla Structures into Tecla PowerFab and Tecla EPM. So where is this usually controlled? This is under the Tecla menu catalogs. And here we have the profile catalog, bulk catalog, and material catalog. And material catalog is usually where a lot of issues are uh, related to material grades. So under any steel, you can come in here. Uh, one of the big culprits is like A500, um, you know, grade C or grade B. Sometimes fabricators want this shortened and a little bit different. So you can always copy that grade and then change it to, to whatever that they want and just make sure that you input those into the properties. So coordinate that up front at the beginning of the job. Another key thing to uh, kind of keep in mind as the detailer in coordinating with the fabricator is uh, sequences or phases. So here on the Manage tab, there's the phases here and you might have different sequences on the job. Now, what's important to understand is that uh, in the Tecla EPM and PowerFab export, both the phase number and the phase name do get exported, but you need to kind of coordinate with the fabricator and tell them what they should be, uh, which particular uh, phase name or phase number that they should be reading, which field they should be reading, to tie that back to sequences in Tecla PowerFab or Tecla EPM. The reason why I bring this up is because sometimes fabricators will use like uh, sequence 1A and then 1B, like they'll break up a sequence that they had pre-planned and make a subsequence of that. And so it's important to tell them that, hey, you know, you should use the phase name uh, for the actual sequence number or sequence uh, value that you're importing and mapping into Tecla PowerFab because that's where you can actually put things like 1A in here and things, uh, and you can put alpha characters as well as numbers. When it comes to the sequence or phase number in Tecla, this number field is only a numerical value and you can't type in like an A, B, or C. So this is something important to kind of understand and talk with the fabricator about and make sure that they're reading phase name if you're gonna use letters in your sequence names. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next item here which is pretty common related to uh, single user versus multi-user. So if you're an older Tecla Structures user and you're still using multi-user mode, it's pretty important uh, when you send to the fabricator that you don't send them the model in multi-user mode. So if you do have the model in multi-user, if you come up here to open and we just go take a look at our models here, there's actually this ability to convert the model to multi-user or to single user. So if you're in a multi-user model, make sure before you zip up and send the model to the fabricator that you convert it to single user. Another key thing here is that underneath model sharing, um, if you have the model shared, what you wanna make sure you do is you don't send a shared model with, to the fabricator. Usually what I recommend is that detailers will zip up a copy of the model that represents the state of the model at that particular submittal. That way you're not having to deal with like the fabricator dealing with model sharing and reading in, um, you know, like an out of date model and things like that. You are going to submit a standalone benchmark version of the model 
So when you come in here to model sharing and you say exclude from sharing, um, basically that model is not going to be taken off of the cloud. It's just that that specific copy on your computer will be excluded from sharing. And then you can zip that uh, model folder up and send that across to the fabricator. And they will not know that uh, model sharing is even involved on that. They'll just open it up in single user mode and they'll be able to do whatever that they need to and want to. This also guarantees uh, for you as the detailer that the fabricator is getting a copy of the model that you guaranteed matches exactly the drawings and the output files that you included in the submittal package. And there's no potential that uh, some issues during model sharing or some changes that a detailer may have accidentally done is going to impact the fabricator in any way. Also, I've seen sometimes where fabricators are trying to use model sharing with the detailer, they fall behind on the sync and they don't sync all the latest uh, packages and their model is actually behind what the actual submittal has been submitted from the detailer. So this is what I recommend is to send it across in single user and not multi-user. And then if you're using model sharing to exclude from model sharing before you submit it to the fabricator. Now, one other thing that I try to do for the fabricator as the detailer is most fabricators are used to opening up the 3D view. So if I go to my view list here underneath the view menu, you're going to see all of these views that might have been included in the model, uh, including grid lines and things like that. But most fabricators are trained to open up the 3D view and they're expecting to see the entire model. Now, what I do is I will usually close down every other view out of Tecla Structures. I'll leave the 3D view open, but the other really important thing that I do is I double click on the background. And if I'm the lead detailer or project manager at the detailing firm, I ensure that the 3D view is saved in the model open, as well as having all of the color just by class here in the representation. So I just have this default color by class and then maybe concrete is transparent, etc but I have default representation unless the fabricator instructs me otherwise. And then also here under the object group for the view filters, I come in here and I make sure that I don't have any filters turned on. Now, if you have a bunch of presets, like for the sequences and the jobs, and you don't want to kind of delete all those, you can leave them in here, but just uncheck all the checkboxes just like this and press modify and just make sure that the model is completely visible for the fabricator. I have seen so many times where detailers will submit to the fabricator and they've got like the work area fit to a specific corner of the building or they have a bunch of things turned off. Like here also in their display settings, they've turned off bolts and certain things or they've set weird colors in the model that uh, don't make sense to the fabricator or they have more often filtered a certain sequence or area of the model and then the fabricator thinks that the job is incomplete and they don't know how to get in there and find it. So you gotta remember that you're trying to make it as easy as possible as the detailer for the fabricator to just simply open up Tecla structures, see the entire model, and then go do whatever it is that they've gotta to do to get the information out or to review the model. Now, one thing that's pretty important to do as the detailer that not all detailers do is diagnose and repair the model as well as the database. And you can do that underneath the Tecla menu here, and you can go to diagnose and repair. You can repair model. And then if everything is okay, it'll stay at the lower left, diagnosed and okay. And then I also come in here and diagnose and repair and just say repair library database. So what you're looking for here is if there's any particular errors related to user defined attributes, or if there's um, any solid errors in the model where there's parts that um, have bad cuts on them and have caused the part to disappear, this actually impacts your drawings and weights and things like that. And you wanna make sure you go fix any of those and any of these objects in the model or in this list that will highlight those objects in the model. And you can press uh, Z on your keyboard and then zoom into those if those objects are actually there. These are just UDA issues and these have been fixed, so there's nothing really there related. But um, solid errors are one big thing, but another big reason why you're repairing the library database and repairing the model is you're trying to get rid of empty assemblies. So sometimes when you're doing a lot of changes and depending on the way that you delete things out of the model during and then during numbering, sometimes you'll get these empty assemblies in the model and sort, so, sort of keeps this residue of assemblies um, that really don't have anything on them, but it keeps on telling Tecla that the numbering is out of date and that the piece marking isn't up to date. And so when you're running reports and uh, X CNC exports and the Tecla EPM export, you keep seeing this message that numbering is not up to date, but it really is. It's just that you have these empty assemblies in the model and things like that. So it's a good idea to diagnose and repair the model. 
I usually do this pretty consistently, especially if there's lots of detailers and I'm using model sharing on a project. I'll pretty consistently do this two or three times a week just to try to keep things clean and find any potential errors and issues. But I especially do this before I uh, do any submittals, but before I make shop drawings um, and I'm running numbering and before I create drawings, I try to do a diagnosis and repair, make sure everything's nice and clean before I do that big wave of numbering because then it'll help eliminate any of those empty assemblies and things like that being considered during the numbering process. So again, just as a detailer, it's a good idea to make sure that you've diagnosed and repaired the model to make sure that it'll help improve and make sure that your numbering is up to date. Now the next really important thing is then making sure that your numbering is up to date. Sometimes detailers will submit models and they've done some modifications or some pieces got flagged as modified. And for instance here, if I grab on this beam and say inquire part, we'll see that there's a question mark on that uh, piece mark there, which means that the numbering is out of date and numbering modified needs to be run. Now what's interesting is that here in the document manager, I have drawings created for that, but there's no flag for that and showing that it's out of date because numbering hasn't been run. If I tried to open up that drawing here, I would get that message and it would ask me to run numbering, but I don't see it here. Now one other extra cautionary flag for the detailer that should help prevent this is that when they try to print drawings, it shouldn't let them print any drawings that are potentially out of date. But again, I've seen it where some middle packages come from detailers to fabricators. They have question marks in the reports or in the piece marks. And then when the fabricator is trying to extract CNC files or run certain things themselves, the numbering and the piece marks are not up to date. And so then that they can't get the information that they need. The other thing though that's really important for the detailer is that the detailer should not be submitting anything to the fabricator that has pieces and drawings that are out of date. It is the detailer's goal to try to make sure all of the numbering of any parts and assemblies included in an assembly are up to date, don't have any question marks on them, and all the drawings are cleared of any out of date or update flags. So this is something important. If you as a fabricator ever get a model and you're trying to get things out of the model and you see a message maybe like this, watch this, I'll go to export here, I'll go to NC files. Let's say I'm gonna export some DSTV files or NC1 files. I'll turn on these check boxes here and I'll just select on the steel in the model. Now what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and say create and I'm gonna get this message that numbering is out of date and it's asking me to run numbering. And some fabricators don't actually have licenses of Tecla structures that will allow them to do the numbering. So then they can't actually process anything until the detailer does the numbering and sends them that model. So this is one of those really big things for the detailer that you wanna make sure your numbering is up to date for anything that you've submitted parts and assemblies wise, as well as make sure your drawings are completely up to date as well. Now the last thing that I'm gonna show you here is a technique that I use, especially when the fabricator tells me that they need to create CNC exports uh, for specific items that I've included in a submittal, and they need to select those items in the model based on that submittal package. So here, this is probably gonna be a case where I'm working at a issue for construction or fabrication release. So if I go into my document manager here on the drawings and reports tab at the top of Tecla, I'm gonna see my drawings in the drawing list. Now I'm gonna just scroll a little bit over here to the right because I tend to use the title three field here. So watch this, I'm gonna just drag this column over so it's a little bit to the left. Um, that way I don't have to kind of scroll over to find it. And I'm using Title Three here uh, rather than something like Title One, just because Title One and Title Two are often used by the detailer for other things. Now, when I look at this, it looks like I've got uh, one piece here that is doesn't have this on it, and it's because of the piece mark being out of date, and so it won't let me modify that until I update that. That's why there's nothing there. But here you can see that I've got uh, this Submittal One and Submittal Two in different drawings here in the Title Three field. So if I right click and go to Properties, this is where I am inputting that in at. So 001 and 002. Now, if I'm the fabricator and I see that in the uh, submittal package folder name that I'm trying to look for drawings and contents that are related to submittal two, then what I can do is I can type in title three colon equals, um, and then I can do a search for that specific number. So I'll do a search for two and then I'll press enter. 
And then what it does is it uh, basically the way I've drawn this out is title three is the column that I'm looking in. And then I'm saying anything that's in the, the title three column that equals 002 is going to then filter the drawing list. And now I've got all of those specific drawings related to that. So then I can select on these. So I'll click on the first drawing, hold down shift on my keyboard and select the last drawing there. And all those drawings are selected. Then what I can do is I can press this button here that looks like a kind of an isometric black cube. If I press on that, that will highlight all of the parts and assemblies in the model associated with the drawings on that submittal package. From there, I can come up here and I can go to export and see files. I can make sure these are checked and then run all my CNC files. I can run any kind of reports or things that I specifically want for that and run any of the CNC API integrations for, for specific vendors like pipe bending or pipe cutting machines or specific uh, CNC beam line fabricators or uh, machine manufacturers that have uh, specific Tecla API integrations with Tecla beyond the just standard CNC and uh, NC1 DSTV files. So again, the way that I do this is I go in the document manager, I use a very specific field consistently um, across the detailing job and even across jobs if possible. So I usually like to stick with like title three. And then I just go inside of there and I set that specific submittal number. I tell the fabricator exactly where that's at. They can then use this filtering up here at the top to filter by that, select the parts in the model that are associated to those filter drawings, and then they can easily make the exports that they need to. If you don't do something like this and you're doing a partial submittal, especially on a large complicated job, it becomes very difficult for the fabricator to try to find and select the parts in the model that they're looking for in order to get that selection set that's in that submittal package. Now, this is the easiest way that I do it is using the drawings especially at issue for fabrication. You can also use submittal filters if you want, uh, or model filters if you want to, but I like using the drawing list because then that's very consistent and easy for the fabricator to understand and verify against the drawing submittal that they see um, that you've sent to them. If you found this content useful, please subscribe to our channel and press the alerts button to be notified when we upload new content.